Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's What Is World, where we do Bible scripture reading. We dialogue about the Bible. We study the Bible, and we read passages out of the Bible. We're still in chapter, uh, well, we're still in the book of Job, chapter 24 through 30. We're going to be going over chapter 24, Job, through chapter 30. Okay, um, let's get right on into it. We have the first scripture reading of, let me see, Job is still replying back to where we left off. I think it was with uh, Elipaphes or Elaphaz, Elaphaz, El Elaphaz. He was replying back to him. Okay, so let's get right on into it. Why does the Almighty not set times for judgment? Why must those who know him look in vain for such days? Men move boundary. I'm sorry. Men move boundary stones. They pasture flocks they have stolen. They drive away the orphan donkeys and take the widow ox and pledge. They trust the needy from the path and force all the poor of the land into hiding. Like wild donkeys in the desert, the poor go about their labor of foraging food. The wasteland provides food for their children. They gather fodder in the fields and glean in the vineyards, vineyards of the wicked. Lacking clothes, they spend the night naked. They have nothing to cover themselves in the cold. They are drenched by mountain rain and hug the rocks for lack of shelter. The fatherless child is snatched from the beast. Oh, I'm sorry, snatched from the breast. The infant of the poor sees for a dead. Lacking clothes, they go about naked. They carry the cheese, but still go hungry. They crush olives among the terrace. They tread the wine presses, yet suffer thirst. The groans of the dying rise from the city, and the souls of the wounded cry out for help. But God charges no one with wrongdoing. There are those who rebel against the light, who do not know its way, ways or stay in its path. When daylight is gone, the murderer rises up the kills and kills the poor and needy. In the night, he steals forth like a thief. The eye of the adulterer watches for dust. He thinks no eye will see him. He keeps his face concealed. In the dark, men break into houses, but by day, they shut themselves in. They want nothing to do with the light. For all of them, deep darkness is their mourning. They make friends with the terrors of darkness, yet they are foam on the moment yet they are foam on the surface of the water their portions of the land is crushed so that no one goes to the vineyards as heat and drought snatches away the melted snow so the grave snatches away those who have sinned the wound forgets them the worm feasts on them evil men are no longer remembered but are broken like a tree they prey on the barren and childless woman and to the widow show no kindness. But God drags away the mighty by his power. Though they become established, they have no insurance of life. He may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their way. But his eyes are on their ways. For a little while they are exalted and then they are gone. They are brought low and gathered up like all others. They are cut off like heads of grain. If this is not so, who can prove me false and reduce my words to nothing? Excuse me about that. I had to clear my throat. Okay, then we have Balad replies back to Job, chapter 25. Then Balad the Shiite replied, Dominion and awe belong to God. He established order in the heights of heaven. 
can his forces be numbered? Upon whom does his light not rise? How then can a man be righteous before God? How can one born a woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in his eyes, how much less man who is but a maggot, a son of man, who is only a warm worm? Job is replying back. How you have helped the powerless. How you have helped the powerless. How you have saved the arm that is feeble. What advice you have offered to one without wisdom and what great insight you have displayed. Who has helped you utter these words and whose spirit spoke from your mouth? The dead are in deep anguish. Those beneath the waters and all that live in them. Death is naked before God. Destruction lies undercover or uncovered. He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. He wraps up the waters in his clouds, yet the clouds do not burst under their weight. He covers the face of the full excuse me the full moon, spreading the clouds over it. He marks out the horizon on the face of the waters. For a boundary between light and darkness, the pillars of the heavens quake, aghast at his rebuke. By his power, he churned up the sea. By his wisdom, he cut Rahab to pieces. By his breath, the skies became fair. His hand pierced the gliding serpent. And these are but the outer fringe of his works. How faint the whisper we hear of him. Who then can understand the thunder of his power? Job is still continuing speaking in chapter 27. As surely as God lives, who has denied me justice? The Almighty who has made me taste bitterness of soul as long as I have life within me. The breath of God in my nostrils. My lips will not speak wickedness and my tongue will utter no deceit. I will never admit you are in the right. Till I die, I will not deny my integrity. I will remain. I will maintain my righteousness and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. May my enemies be like the wicked, my adversaries like the unjust. For what hope has the godless when he is cut off and God takes away his life? Does God listen to his cry when distress comes upon him? Will he find delight in the Almighty? Will he call upon God at all times? I will teach you about the power of God, the ways of the Almighty. Almighty, I will not conceal. You have all seen this yourselves. Why then this meaningless talk? Here is the fate God allots to the wicked. The heritage a ruthless man receives from the Almighty. However many his children, their fate is the sword. His offsprings would never have enough to eat. The plague would bury those who survived him, and their widows would not weep for them. Though he heaps up silver like dust and clothes like piles of clay, for he lays up the righteous will wear, and the innocent would divide his silver. The house he builds is like a moth's cocoon, like a hood made by watchmen. He lies down wealthy, but will do so no more. When he opens his eyes, all is gone. Terrors overtake him like a flood. A tempest snatches him away in the night. The east wind carries him off, and he is gone. It sweeps him out of his place. It hurls him against him without mercy. I'm sorry. It hurls itself against him without mercy. As he flees headlong from its power, it clasps its hands in derision and hisses him out of his place. There is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. This is 28, chapter 28 of Job. 
Iron is taken from the earth and copper is smelted from ore. Man puts an end to the darkness. He searches the farthest recesses for ore in the blackest darkness. Far from where people dwell, he cuts his shaft and places forgotten by the foot of man. Far from men, he dangles and sways the earth from which food comes. It's transformed below as by fire. Sapphires come from its rocks and its dust contains nuggets of gold. No bird of prey no, knows that hidden path. No falcon's eye has seen it. Proud beasts do not set foot on it, and no lion prowls there. Man, Man's hands assaults his flinty rock and lays bare the roots of the mountain. His tunnels through the rock, his eyes see all its treasures. He searches the source, sources of the river and brings hidden things to light. But where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? Man does not comprehend its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living. The deep says it is not in me. The sea says it is not with me. It cannot be bought. It cannot be bought with the finest gold, nor can it nor can its price be weighed in silver. It cannot be bought with the gold of offer. Oak free or fear with precious onyx or sapphires, neither God nor crystal can compare with it, nor can it be or nor can it nor can it be had for jewels of gold. Coral and jasper are not worthy of mention. The price of wisdom is beyond rubies. The topaz of Cush cannot compare with it. It cannot be bought with pure gold. When then does wisdom come from? Where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, only a rumor of it has reached our ears. God understands the way to a God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it, it dwells. For he views the end of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, then he looked up, then he looked at wisdom and appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. And he said to man, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to shun evil is understanding. Again, let me say that again. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil, meaning to don't do anything with evil. Go from it, run from it, whatever. Don't even look at it. It's understanding. Job is continuing his lengthy discussion or his response back to his fellow brethren. Uh, chapter 29, how I long for the months gone by, for the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house, when Almighty was still with me and my children were around me, when my path was drenched with cream and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young man saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouths with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. Whoever heard me spoke well of me, and those who saw me command, come, come in it commended me because I rescued the poor who cried for help and the fatherless who had none to assist him. The man who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. I took up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and snatched the victims from their teeth. I thought I would die in my own home, um, 
in my own house. My days as numerous as the grains of sand. My roots will reach to the water, and the dew will lie all night on my branches. My glory will remain fresh in me, the bow ever new in my hand. I'm sorry, the bow ever new in my hand. Men listen to me expectantly, waiting in silence for my counsel. As I had spoken, they spoke no more. My words fell gently on their ears. They waited for me as for showers and drink, and my words as the spring rain. When I smiled at them, they scarcely believed it. The light of my face was precious to them. I chose the way for them and sat as their chief. I dwelt, dwelt as a king among his troops. I was like one who comforts mourners. And we're going into the last and final uh, chapter for the night, which is Job the uh, chapter 30. But now they mock me, men younger than I, whose fathers I have disdained to put with my sheep dogs. But what use was the strength of their hands to me, since their vigor had gone from them? Haggard from want and hunger, they roamed the parched lands and desolate wastelands all night. In the brush, they gathered salt herbs, and their food was the root of the broom tree. They were banished from their fellow men, shouted at it as if they were thieves. They were forced to live in the dry stream beds, among the rocks and in the holes in the ground. They brayed among the bushes and huddled in the undergrowth, a base and nameless brood. They were driven out of the land, and now their songs mock me in song. I have become a byword among them. They detest me and keep their distance. They do not hesitate to spit in my face. Now that God has unstrung my bow and afflicted me, they throw off restraint in my presence. On my right, the tribe attacks. They lay snares for my feet. They build their siege ramps against me. They break up my road. They succeed in destroying me without anyone's helping them. They advance as though, oh, uh, they advance through a gaping breach. Amid the ruins, they come rolling in. Terrors overwhelm me. My dignity is driven away as by the wind. My safety vanished like a cloud. And now my life ebbs away. Days of suffering gripe me. Days of suffering gripe me or grip me. Night pierces my bones. My gawning pains never rest. And his great power, God, becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud, and I am reduced to dust and ashes. I cry out to you, O God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Surely no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet when I hope for good, evil came. When I look for light, then came darkness. The training inside me never stops. Days of suffering comfort me or confront me. I go about blackened but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I have become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. My skin glows, my skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My harp is turned into mourning and my flute to the sound of wailing. Okay, guys, that was it for um, chapters 24 through 30. Of the book of Job. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back tomorrow, God willing, to complete uh, chapter 31 and we'll see how far we can go into Job as well. But um, I want to say I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to come back in a, uh, several days. This is because I was under the weather 
uh, I haven't got it like really told to me, but I think I'm suffering from like a sinusitis type thing. Uh, my head's like full of cold, or uh, what do you call it? I have a lot of drainage coming from my head through my nose, and I'm coughing up a lot of yellow discharge or whatnot. So I haven't been feeling my best. So, but I hope you all have been doing your Bible study and doing your due diligence when I wasn't available. And um, maybe I can catch up with you if you've already gone ahead of me because of um, my not being here, sharing the Bible and dialoguing with you. Still a good thing. Uh, we always don't have to wait on one another. If we can see where we can go a little further and ask for discernment, meaning understanding and wisdom for what we are reading, then please go ahead. Get the knowledge. Um, get the power. Uh, get the fortitude that you need to keep on keeping on through the grace of God and through his word. Okay, um, that's all I had for tonight, guys. I'm still, you know, trying to uh, overcome this sinus cold or whatever it is. And I'm not really feeling the best, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do, right? So I hope you all have a safe Memorial, not Memorial, Labor Day. And um, I'll see you um, next time for more Bible reading and scripture dialoguing with one another. Okay, God bless you. Amen. And good night.